Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. One of the indications for occlusal adjustment or thorough occlusal analysis is prior to any reconstructive or operative procedures. The fabrication of a partial, removable partial denture indeed falls in this category. An adequate occlusal analysis uh, is necessary and is facilitated by the use of the mounted cast. The cast should be or should have been checked with the mouth to uh, make sure that the mounting is accurate and one of the first things we would do to do that would be to double check uh, the first contact in the mouth against the first contact on the articulator. Now this should be done with the patient in the chair and it has been done for this particular set of casts. The centric relation prematurity, we mounted the casts in the centric relation position and so the first centric relation prematurity has been verified with that of the patient. And in this particular case it is on this lingual incline of the buccal cusp of the first molar against the maxillary uh, buccal incline of the lingual cusp. Now this, when the case is arced in the centric relation position, is the first contact. If we then uh, go to or simulate the centric occlusion position, we bring the cast and let the teeth and take over and guide, we have a slide in centric on this patient. It has a vertical component to the slide as well as a lateral component to the slide. So prior to the reconstruction of this patient, we would want to eliminate this slide in its entirety. Now from the oral exam, uh, we know that some of the anterior teeth on this patient are mobile. So the analysis of the cast is not going to be completely accurate because we do not have that degree of mobility on the stone cast. But the indications are that with the prior bridge work on the patient, the bridge work that has been done prior to our seeing the patient, there is an indication that that what may have happened is that the, there was a slight loss of vertical dimension with restoring the posterior occlusion and it has caused the end of the slide, uh, uh, at the end of the slide, a quite harsh uh, banging or uh, a, uh, a horizontal uh, force against the anterior teeth so that if we look at it here, we see we are concentric relation, we slide the brunt of that end of the slide, the brunt of that force is borne in the patient by these anterior teeth and they do show some mobility. Hopefully with uh, the occlusal adjustment and restoring good posterior contact and some adjustment of the anterior teeth, which would be necessary in this case, we would get a stable occlusion for the centric position. After adjustment of the centric relation to centric occlusion range, we will probably end up with a long and broad centric, properly termed freedom in centric. Now, the uh, indicating material that I use in the occlusal analysis is a very thin, a thin uh, film. Uh, it is thinner than the, it's called AccuFilm and uh, it is thinner than articulating paper and it marks only on one side. So when I do the analysis here, we'll have to mark both sides. Now this is just to repeat that first arcing in the centric relation and registering the entire slide. In centric relation to centric occlusion. I'll do this then bilaterally.
We'll examine the cast again on the occlusal surface and we see uh, that this is the first prematurity but that the bicuspid the bicuspid is picked up uh, right afterward in the slide to the centric occlusion position. The same is true on the opposite side. This is uh, probably a, a, a mark which has been made going to the centric occlusion position. Okay, now, uh, as we said, this should be adjusted out. We should have a stable centric position that we're going to restore the patient to. And we should also look at the lateral excursions, the working and balancing excursions. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to analyze this. I'm going to analyze it both from centric, first from centric relation holding the cast in the centric relation position and making a lateral, then letting it go to the centric occlusion position and also making a lateral excursion from that position. The difference is going to be very slight. And what we want to keep in mind, the projected type of occlusion for this class two partial denture, the occlusion on the replacement teeth would be uh, probably best for the patient if there were no lateral guidances on the replacement teeth whatsoever. In other words, what we would shoot for in our finished occlusion would be to have centric stops only on those replacement teeth and not and not lateral working or balancing marks. So we, when we're adjusting the occlusion, we want to make sure that that patient can make all the requirements of the adjusted natural dentition. Uh, it, it should satisfy all the requirements of the fully adjusted natural dentition. <coughs> okay, now in looking at the marks made from the lateral, by the lateral excursion, we can see that in this maxillary anterior area that the guidance, the first guidance is coming from the cuspid. It is right near the acentric stop for that tooth and it, the initial lateral excursion is borne by the cuspid but as we get go out a little bit further laterally it is borne by this lateral incisor. Now this incisor is mobile in the patient. From our clinical exam, I note that this lateral excisor is mobile. So perhaps in our adjustment of this patient, we would ease slightly, because we have a clinical indication that this is too much force for that tooth to bear, because there is some slight periodontal bone loss, we may alter this slightly and take some of the pressure off of this lateral incisor and maybe get a further excursion on the cuspid and as we look further back in the arch there's also a mark in working uh, in the working area for this bicuspid so if we would have those t three teeth uh, contacting simultaneously in the finished occlusal adjustment without overloading one, namely this lateral incisor, for this lateral excursion, it would probably be best for that patient. Now looking at the excursion to the opposite side, we again see in the lateral area a mark here and examining the occlusion for that side, we don't see much else in the way of a lateral excursion. So this tooth is extremely mobile in, that, in the patient that I note from the clinical exam. And so the lateral excursion of this side is being borne almost in its entirety by this lateral incisor. And it's a weak tooth from a periodontal standpoint. And so perhaps in this lateral, uh, or in preparing for the restorative procedure to follow, we should uh, reduce this somewhat to pick up guidances on the uh, adjacent cuspid and possibly bicuspid. So we would relieve this lateral mark. Now, there is a steep, con or a steep incisal guidance on the patient, so I wouldn't expect there to be 
uh, a balancing interference of any significance at all. And indeed, the analysis bears this out. You can see that on the balancing side in this molar area, it frees up rather nicely with no balancing contact. If we had a balancing contact, it would have been indicated in the red in the red uh, material or in the red indicating material and I have none uh, whatsoever. What I do have is that free first centric relation prematurity there. So there is no balancing interference for us to deal with. However, we will have to double check this after adjusting the centric and the lateral excursions. Uh, after they are adjusted, it is possible that uh, the lowering of the vertical dimension in the eccentric position from adjustment of working guidances, you could possibly pick up balancing contacts. So we've now checked both the uh, working and balancing, or working and balancing on that side. And if we look at this opposite side, uh, being it being terminating in the bicuspid area, we see there is no balancing contact on that side either. Now the next check we will make is that the is for the protrusive excursion, and the protrusive excursion we would like to have uh, simultaneous contact of the anterior teeth disarticulating the posterior teeth. And I'm just going to mark the anteriors because we do have that uh, steep incisal guidance situation and I have noted that, that, uh, that there is disarticulation in the posterior. Looking at the guidance, we do have a central incisor which is probably bearing most of that load. So we could, uh, we could possibly improve this situation through a modification of this surface to maybe pick up uh, another central incisor in that protrusive excursion. Let's again look at the posterior to show that in the protrusive, what we want is disarticulation of the posterior and we do have that on the anterior teeth. Now, projecting the uh, replacement area, what I said before holds true that we would like to have centric stops with the, uh, with the prematurities uh, or centric stops in the posterior with no uh, prematurities or interferences in lateral excursions. No contact of the replacement teeth in the lateral excursions. So now we can possibly improve uh, some, some of the occlusal surfaces to receive centric stops from the projected replacement teeth by slight uh, indicate, by slight uh, modifications of these occlusal surfaces. But first of all, we should go and finish the occlusal adjustment on the stone cast before, uh, before doing the adjustment on the patient. And another thing that would help us in projecting the final result of uh, our restoration would be to do a diagnostic setup of the replacement teeth and a diagnostic wax up of any tooth that is going to be restored. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.